another video. As you can see, the weather has taken a turn for the worst and we've actually just had our first hard frost. We're kind of sat in mid-November now. So as you can see from my greenhouse, I've attempted to bubble wrap it in time for this cold weather, but I've only managed to get half of it done. Actually, no, I've got one side done and then uh, half of the other side done. So I'm almost there. So I'm just kind of, when I've got a bit of free time, just coming in and adding more bubble wrap. Um, I think it's making a difference. I've got a little thermometer and I can track what the and I can track what the temperatures do overnight and when the coldest and warmest parts of the day are. And I think it's um, averaging out at coldest at night, minus two degrees, but during the day it's kind of averaging out at around eight degrees. So I think it's warmer than what it was, but I don't think there's much in it to be honest. Um, so I'm just bubble wrapping it anyway, just because I do have my dahlias in here. And one of the things I am doing right now is just cleaning, digging up and cleaning up the rest of the dahlias I had in my little um, growing bed in here. And then I'm going to let them dry out under some bubble wrap so they don't freeze and go mushy. And then I'm going to store them away for winter properly. So I'm just doing it now. I'm just cutting back the foliage because I just don't need it. So I'm not going to spend too much time in here today or not too much time that I'm going to film. Um, I just kind of wanted to introduce today's video in case I don't get time to do it whilst I'm on the plot. Um, so, oof. So I'm just cleaning this up still. If you'd like a video on how I clean up and store dailies, then let me know and I'll make one. I have, I did already do one last year, but it wasn't as far as I'd be able to explain it now um, with a little bit more experience. So yeah, let me know if that's something you're interested in and I can do that for you. But if not, then, you know, it's a very niche market of people that actually um, care about dailies. So there we go. So some things I don't think I've told you about is I now have a giant 1000 litre IBC tank. So water management this year is going to be really good because I'm going to be able to either set up some sort of solar powered irrigation. That would be the dream. Not sure if I'll actually do it. Or if I don't do solar powered irrigation, then I'll be able to have like a cordless, <laughs> the squirrel, um, a cordless pump. So I can just actually use a hose on my plot, make watering 10 times quicker because currently I'm just wheelbarrowing back and forth um, some watering cans. So it's not the most efficient, but now with the IBC tank, that's one more thing I've improved efficiency on if I can get that up and running. So that's one thing I want to do. I need to find somewhere permanent to set it up before I fill it up. Um, so I'm thinking it's going to... Oh, God, no. No. Oh, wait, no, that works. Oh, I thought I broke my tuber and I... In the wrong place so it wouldn't grow but this is split perfectly and I now have two Cafe de Paris's so that's good. Um, oh what is that? An earwig. No. No you are not staying in there. What was I saying? So yeah I want to find somewhere more permanent to set up my IBC tank. Um, I'm thinking I want it next to my compost, compost bays so in order to do that I need to break them down because they both need to be rebuilt really badly because um, I want to do like a whole system where I have a free part compost bay and they have a roof on it so I can put guttering on it and then the guttering will filter into the IBC tank. So it's going to be a whole system. Um, but in order to do that, I need to level the ground. So I need to move the compost bay from where it is, move it right out of the way, level the ground um, build those back up, put posts in so I can attach a roof and guttering and then fix my IBC tank alongside it. I then have, or I then wanted to do, well, firstly, I start with, there's a lady on my plot. Um, she was very, very kindly um, gifting me one of her, her old sheds and uh, I can't tell you how grateful I am because I've been looking at how to logistically get a shed on my plot and it's just not, from what I've seen, it's just it wouldn't have been an easy task. But the fact that she's gifted me hers makes it so much easier to get it onto my plot. So I will be getting a shed next year, which is great because then that frees up space in my greenhouse where I'm currently storing loads of like gardening amendments. Um, so then I can actually have a proper growing space in my greenhouse on the, on the allotment and then all my bits and bobs in the shed. So again, 
that just makes things 10 times more efficient. I can actually leave stuff at the plots and I don't have it stuck in the back of my car every time I go back and forth. Um, so again, that's just another big efficiency um, achieved there. So I've blabbered on enough about those sort of projects. Um, as for now, I will probably go to the plot at some point. The next job on my list is to just finish off the last little patch of my no-dig beds. Um, last weekend I went down, I de-weeded all the chart that was there. Um, so I just need to lay some cardboard, lay some manure and then just let it sit. In the springtime I'm going to cover all those beds with a fresh layer of compost. So I want to do that. And then that is that whole section left for the winter, that's all my beds put to sleep. Then once all my beds are put to sleep, the next task will be to, will be to tackle my asparagus plot area. So again, just, just reviewing what I said before, I'm going to wood chip path all the bits that don't have asparagus in, then mulch and feed all the bits that do have asparagus in, and it will just make it look a hell of a lot neater. And then that's, that's that bit done, and I can just concentrate on the bigger projects and really cleaning up my plot. I forgot to mention as well, there is one more really important thing that I'm going to be doing on my lunch today as well. And I just wanted to do a shout out. So I haven't got my garlic in yet. The ground is kind of frozen at the moment. So I'm thinking I might just be pushing it to get it in. But so I can get it prepped and ready for when I can um, sort out my little allotment area that's off to the side of me. Um, I'm going to pot up some garlic and just let it shoots go now. And then when it's ready, I can just pop it into the ground once I've got that space clear. Um, but before I do that, the garlic I've got um, is garlic Kling Kingsland White and garlic Province White. And these are both from Grown Local. So Ian at Grown Local sent me these, so go and check out any last bits he's got left. I'm pretty sure he's got a few. But yeah, they're quite massive bulbs, so really big bulbs. Um, they look really good. So if you need any last minute garlic, check out Grown, Grown Local. If you follow the Potty Mouth Gardening Club, then you already know how amazing Ian is and how generous Ian is. Um, but yeah, so he sent me that garlic and also another one of these 28 deep cell root trays. So I'm also going to use this for so many things, but I'm thinking at the moment I might use it for um, potting up some of my sweet peas. So yeah, massive thank you to Ian. Another thing to mention that Ian's got, because I was speaking to him not that long ago, um, he's ordered in some really nice new cut flower seeds and I'm talking about the ones that you usually get on Chilterns that are probably like four pound. Um, Ian's starting to buy these in now at some really good prices so go check those out. I will also link them. Um, so if you like your zinnias, you like your petunias, um, you like your cosmos, all of that, he's got it and he's got some of the really nice um, varieties that are quite hard to get hold of. So yeah, I'll link that, but I'm definitely going to buy some. Um, so if you want to do, I might do a grow along. If I get some, I'll tell you what varieties I do and we'll do a grow along to see how they turn out. Because some of these varieties I've not tried before and I'm really interested to see how they'll bloom. Um, so yeah, another thing to go check out. That's that. Um, so I'm going to finish off what I'm doing in here, which is again, just potting up some of the hundreds of pine berries and strawberries I've got. And yeah, and then I'll see you at the plot. Hello. 